and for the ministry that we are doing here for the people of Sierra Leone. Hallelujah. In many ways, our humble church here that started 14 years ago with two or three people, and now by the grace of God, we have grown to so many things, schools, churches, clinics, teachers' colleges, kindergartens, orphanages, all in 14 years, and God has rewarded us by providing us with a bishop as well that makes our church complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can stand up to any, any church in any other mission in Africa. We have now the full power of an of a Episcopal church, and therefore we have all the privileges that go along with that. It is a reward from God. It is a reward from the Holy Patriarch of Alexandria. It is a reward from the Holy Synod of Alexandria in all Africa. And we are very happy to receive that award. Hallelujah. Amen. The following promises. I will not change. Just because they've made me a bishop, it doesn't mean now I have to act in a different way. I will still be the same person that you knew before. I will still do the same things that I have done for the last 14 years. There will be no change. The only change is that we have been given a privilege and we've been given a status now that we didn't have before. But concerning my own behavior, it will still be the same as before. Nothing has changed between you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. Andrea, recently, I had to go through the ceremony of becoming a bishop. I had to speak to his beatitude, our spiritual father in Africa. And I told his beatitude in humility that I will remain uh, a bishop, but I will be in Sierra Leone as for the people who are suffering, for the people who live in Crew Bay, for the people who live in Waterloo, for the people who have no jobs, for the people who have no money to pay for their hospital, for the people who have no money for their school fees, for the people who cannot go to hospital, for that mother that has no money for her children. I will be a bishop for you, for the people who have no money, for the people who are suffering, for the people who have no house, for the people who cannot afford to pay school. I am your bishop and I will do the best I can to help you in my new capacity. Hallelujah. Yeah. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation, the gospel that is the hope for you and me for eternal life that will continue with power and the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God is the word of power. The word of God is the way of salvation. We have no other choice. We have no other avenue. We have no other door. We have no other venue than to go through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the way of salvation. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, there is no other door to knock on than on the door that Jesus presents through his word in the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you may be feeling upset. Some of you may be feeling sick. Some of you may be feeling that you don't belong. Some of you may be feeling that there's something going wrong in your life. Now, there are reasons for that feeling. It is not by accident you feel that way. Very few people are happy. Very few people wake up in the morning and, and say, Oh, what a beautiful morning. I'm so happy. Oh, I am so happy I'm going to sing a song. Very few people do that. Hallelujah. Amen. But the basic reason for all that, my dear children, is sin. S-I-N. The result of sin is what is causing so much, so much upsetting, so much anger, so much frustration, so many, so many problems in our life. It's because we sin and we don't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Amen. In the Holy Gospel that there was a man who could not walk for many, many, many years. Put yourself in that position. If you wake up in the morning, you put one leg out of bed or wherever you are, you step down, you start walking, you go and wash or you go and eat or whatever. Your feet are being used for a purpose. But imagine now you cannot use your feet. Imagine now you can't move them. They're not, it's not possible to move them. 
and you have to rely on other people to carry you, you have to rely on other people to dress you sometimes, you have to rely on other people to take you from place A to place B. It's so humiliating to have other people do all these things for you and you cannot do them yourself because you cannot walk. That would be awful. And that is why we find today a man who cannot walk. Hallelujah. Amen. You are in that position. Whether you are blind or whether you are paralyzed and you rely on other people, you need friends. And this particular man who has been paralyzed for so many years, he had good friends. And they took him to Jesus. Now, that's a good place to take someone. They took him to Jesus. They had heard that Jesus, the Son of God, is able to heal diseases. That's, that's unbelievable. Can you imagine today, uh, with all the medicine in the world, with all the things that we have, we still cannot control Corona. We still cannot control, we have vaccination upon vaccination. We have Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Novavax, so many efforts to try to stop this corona uh, epidemic and yet it's still here all the science everything they are trying i'm not saying they shouldn't be trying they should be trying but you see we are humans and it's human science and it's doing the best it can but the little virus the little corona virus has got more power at the moment than we can imagine and so therefore we need to have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taken care of so many diseases that could not be healed. Leprosy and so many other things those days were so hard to heal. And yet he healed them with his power. Hallelujah. Amen. We should not be trying to uh, have medicine and we should try very hard to try to beat Corona. There should be all kinds of efforts to do that. And we are very thankful to medical science and to all the microbiologists who are doing great work. But my point is this, at the end of the day, we have Jesus as well. We have science, but we also have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We turn to Him and we beg Him to heal us if we should be touched by Corona. We also go to medicine, but we also pray to our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And by the way, Ebola is far, far more dangerous than Corona. During the Ebola crisis here, uh, brothers and sisters, children, we uh, had to pray so many times during the day. We did special celebrations. We asked God to protect the, the Orthodox people and the other people. And through these prayers, not one Orthodox believing Christian was touched by Ebola. Other people were being hurt and so forth. We had a clean record during the time of Ebola. Why? Because God blessed us. That is why the power of God blesses you and gives you immunity. And that is one of the reasons why none of us were touched by Ebola. Hallelujah. Amen. The first thing he does is he tells that man that his sins are forgiven. His sins are forgiven. And the minute that his sins are forgiven, uh, Jesus tells him, get up now. You have not walked for years and years and years. Your legs cannot support you. You stand up, you will fall down. Because your legs are not strong. But I am healing you, and I'm making your legs to be strong. I'm putting power in your muscles. Why? Because your sins it is so. it is have so. been forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven. Many of the problems we face today, boys and girls, is because we are sinful. And we do not recognize that we are sinful. We do not repent. We do not say to God, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for stealing. I'm sorry for lying. I'm sorry for hating. I'm sorry for telling bad things to people about other people. I'm sorry for backstabbing people. I'm sorry for my hypocrisy. I'm sorry for the terrible things I'm doing. If you do that, God is happy and he will bless you. 
But if you think you've done nothing wrong, you will constantly have problems in life. Constantly you'll have problems. That is why the church has confession. And one day we're going to make soon Father Athanasius a Father Confessor. Uh, Father uh, Soterios is a Father Confessor, is he not? No. He's not. Well, we'll have to make him too. And so what you will see is we go to the priest and we confess our sins. And once we confess our sins, it's gone. The sin is gone. The bad is gone. And you can walk again in the spirit, just like the Lord healed the paralytic. We're all paralyzed in the spirit. We are confused. We don't know what to do. We don't know what the right way is. We do the wrong decisions. We do the wrong way. We walk the wrong way. Why? Because our mind is full of sin. Our spirit is full of sin. We need to get rid of the sin. We have holy confession. Hallelujah. Amen. We keep them. But once you are older, it's difficult to start new habits. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. So you need to learn to say, I'm sorry. I am sorry. If you do something to someone who is upsetting you or you have upset them, you go and say, I'm sorry. Now, I want you all to say to God right now, I am sorry, God. Say, everybody, one, two, three. I am sorry, God. Amen. I am sorry, God, for all the terrible things I'm doing. I am sorry, God, for all the terrible things that I am doing. And I promise to go to the people that I hurt and, and I will say to them, and I promise to go to the people that I have hurt and say to them, I am very, very sorry, please forgive me. I am very, very sorry, please forgive me. Hallelujah. Amen. It means to be blessed by God. Oh my goodness, you can do anything. You can do the impossible. You will be able to do things that no one else can do because God is giving you power. Why? God is blessing you. Why? Because you're doing the right thing. Why? Because you're saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And God will say, this person is humble. I will give him more power. I will raise them up. I will raise them up higher and higher. Why? Because they are humble and they say, I'm sorry. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Is it? People, why should we bother to do that? Because Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross and suffered so that you can have eternal life. So by the power that God has forgiven you, you need to forgive other people. And you need also to say sorry to other people that you have heard. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we learn from the gospel. Not from myself, not from Father Athanasius. We learn from Jesus himself that we need to be sorry for the terrible things we are doing and have done. If you are not sorry, you will not be a very happy person. You will have all kinds of problems. And in order to avoid that, we have confession in the church. So you come to the Holy Father, you tell the Holy Father what you have done wrong, he will bless you and you are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Father will come out, Father Soterios, with the body and blood of Christ. Wow, the body and blood of Christ. Christ. Can you imagine what that is? How powerful that must be. Very, very right? powerful. Very powerful. Very, very. Now, that is for forgiveness of sins. Now, yeah. if you are sinful and you haven't confessed your sins and you go and take this, you're condemning yourself. You're putting fire into yourself. You are being condemned. So please make sure before you take that Holy Communion that you ask forgiveness. You ask forgiveness. I will have Father Athanasius here. You will go and tell him, I'm sorry for my sins and he will bless you and then you can take confession. Now, that's not the best way because there should be full confession. But for economia, thank you. For economia, yes, and we will start that way. Thank you, Slosi. Okay. All right. So may God bless you. May God give you strength. May God remove your sins. And may God make you as light, as light as an aeroplane flying through the sky. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.